Hello guys, welcome to day number 11. So we have successfully completed one third of the journey and I hope you are feeling like a lot of comfort with the very low coding. But trust me guys, this is just a starting. We still have many interesting topic and this following 20 days going to be really much interesting. So today we're gonna solve these questions adder 2. Uh, this is really easy if you have solved adder 1, right? Then adder 2 is not much of difficulty but i am taking this question because it is introducing you something more like we are working on more than two hierarchy here we, we in this question for the first time as i said in our last class we will be having three modules here so what's the difference between the last exercise and this so here what they are giving you they are giving you with the definition of adder add 16. in last exercise also they have given us but in last exercise, I have told you that to add your 16 bits, you need to have 16 full bit adder, uh, full, not full bit, full adder. And one full adder is actually doing one bit additions. So in today's lecture or this exercise, the main aim is to build that full adder. And building a full adder is like the fundamental of building any adder. For example, you can see uh, we have many other adders also like carry select adder, adder subtractor. There are many such important circuit in digital electronics which are dependent on the main fundamental block and that is a full adder. But to design a full adder, your concept of full adder need to be perfect, right? What does a full adder do? As I said, I am saying it again full adder will just do addition of two bit you will give a and b who, who, which will be of one bit only and you'll get a sum but the twist of the story is that you also need to have a c in here this arrow is in wrong direction this is in di this direction c in right because anytime you are doing addition between two things you might need to accept the c carry which have come in the earlier stage so that's why c need to be there and also you need to throw or you need to give the overflow bit to the next stage so that's why we need to have a carry out so that's why any definition any module definition of your full adder need to have four ports four po uh, sorry five ports three would be input ports and two would, would be your output ports so likewise they has given us a kickstart here they have just defined first line of the module or we also sometimes call as a de declaration of the module so they have given us a declaration of the module but we need to write down the definition of that module so we will do that so we'll go down these diagrams are also very insightful you can go through this but let us start our work so first of all we need to assign our sum so now now you need to think of something what's the expression of your sum what's the expression of your sum for for a full adder if you have sometime have studied your full adder in digital electronics for sure you know it is a xor v xor c what's those a v c a v are the two input you are giving one bit one bit and c is your carry in how i am getting this expression we get this expression actually we write the truth table of our full adder so how we do that we just write a v and c in and we just write here all the combination possible for these three so from three three how many combinations are possible eight combinations are possible so zero one zero one zero one i'm not doing go through all of these things you need to do it this is the digital electronics part so i'm not gonna explain but still let me give you a head start and then here the sum yeah O also the carry i'm not having the space here but carry would be there so we will do like here zero 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 if i get three bit my sum would be zero if i get this then my sum would be one if i get this my sum would be one if i get two one then my sum would be zero and i'll get a carry here so i'll get a carry here and then here again one then if i get two one then it would be zero and one likewise we build the whole truth table and then we do the logical simplification using kmap or the boolean algebra for your better understanding, you can just refer to this concepts here. Uh, in Geek for Geek, they have actually nicely explained the full letter and digital logic, how you get it. 
so here see this is your full uh, full truth table and in truth table uh, you will get one 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 and in the carry also you'll get somewhere in one one so then we will write down here like here they are taking the all the sums and then they are getting this from the k map simplification or you can use your general boolean algebra algorithm um, in the boolean algebra you have many postulate uh, many uh, laws so you can use those laws and you can simplify them or you can reduce them to the final expression which is a x or v x or c in so that's not my task and if you don't know that part for now just ignore it just you remember that hey for the sum the expression which i need this is this that a x or b x or c in x or and if you give this expression like if you build a digital circuits which can do x or between your three input then for sure you will get the sum sum means you will get one for these combinations you will get zero for these combinations right and that's the our purpose so that's why the expression is important likewise for c in also we need to simplify it and here they have tried to do it here like they have written uh, your c out c not c in c out yeah carry out and then finally they they have arrived to this expression that is a b a b means words a and v anytime we are writing them together this is means a and v and anytime we are using a plus in the boolean algebra it is your or so a and b or c in and and then this expression and this expression is nothing but the expression of your xor so it is a xor b yeah in the next line they have written it there so this thing it's your task uh, you need to do it and i hope it's very easy your, your boolean algebra if you know it's very easy for you and probably many of you know also so here we will directly write a xor this is your bitwise xor symbol and somebody is saying that hey why bit uh, bitwise why not logical you can use logical here also for uh, actual we don't have any logical operator but we have the inbuilt gate for actual but just remember we are building a full adder which will do addition on one bit only like your a is of one bit b is of one bit and c in is also one bit so it's okay to do with bitwise operator so i am doing it here okay so this is your sum and then you need to assign your c out the carry out and what's the expression of carry out and that is a and b and then just go here i also don't remember it then or c in and then and and then a x or b x or b many time one error we keep on doing and that is we just forgot this n person and we like n person like logical and and we just write it like this we thought hey c and a x or b so implicitly we mean that both are and but both are end in the boolean algebra form right here they have not given us any logical issue because in boolean algebra if we write in product form a and b we implicitly understand it's the end operation but for very long we need to write here so that's why don't forget this end person here logical um, bitwise here uh, bitwise end and then a semicolon perfect so that's our add one module the full adder module is done perfect great that's the fundamental for doing anything any adder now we need to write our top module and also we need to write add 16 but the good thing is that for add 16 they already have given us the module like it's already written in the hdl environment so we don't need to write it but we for sure we need to write for the top module so for top module in our last class we have already written it so let me get it from the last class so to get it what you can do you can just open your hdl bits in another window another window and there you just go to the previous question which is adder one and then go down and here you can see right uh, load previous submission so here you just load the previous one so you got it right so this is what we need here so we'll just copy it and we'll come here and we'll paste here and don't worry in the future uh, problem for sure they won't help us currently they are helping us so as we go on learning the things they will start helping us less and less we need to do everything from scratch so don't worry but for now it's all okay because you are learning okay so just differences from last one and today is that we have defined a extra module which has been defined 16 times inside this module 
if you can see the definition of this module then for sure this add one is defined 16 time here we can't see it here but at least we have this diagram here in diagram they are showing us right one one time instantiation two time three time and then dot dot 16 time it got instantiated so we have done everything so let us submit and i hope we'll get a correct answer we get some issue okay see yeah uh, i have done something mistake here see c is not different right it is c in so write is c in and then submit and also in day nine answer there is some uh, controversy <laughs> not controversy but yeah uh, few of you getting some different answer and also logically you are correct i am also not sure why I, I have given a wrong answer so i need to see and then in tomorrow or day after tomorrow i'll tell you what's the exact answer okay so we got a success and that's great so yeah let's go to the next problem again next problem are all simple this is carry select adder you need to know what is carry select adder first and if you know it then easily you can uh, in very low you can write it right then we have a adder subtractor so if you know it you can easily do it so these two are your homework for sure you need to try it out you need to do it from your scratch and uh, i'll also see it if i see some new uh, concepts are there in these two for, uh, problem for sure i'll take them up in our next episodes else i will take them up in some later episodes like episode 17 like day 17 or day 18 I'm giving all of you some time to uh, do it from your own and from our next episode we'll start from the procedure it's very important but yeah if uh, this, in these two problem if we have some concepts which is very important to know then for sure I'll take in next class so now is the time to know the answer for our last question and most of you are not participating in comment section please do it it's very important because this type of question see this type of question are exact question which are coming in your entrance exam entrance exam means the screening exam for different companies so if you can practice here and how do i know you practice you are practicing only seeing your comment in the below right so please participate in this so yeah here we have a very huge issue actually and the issue is that you can see uh, few of you will say hey issue is that we you have defined a module here but this module don't have any ports so probably a module without a ports is not allowed but the answer is no it's all allowed in in your very log it is allowed and i have said you a module is nothing but a circuit right so inside circuit if you are instantiating some other module which have some port then probably this top module are only designed to give the excitation so that's why a module without a port are all allowed we need port only to communicate with the outside world but if this module is the top and nowhere we're gonna instantiate that module then there is no use of defining any ports right so probably that's why it have no port so that is not the correct answer the correct answer would be c here uh, we have defined a and b as reds type you know reds type it can save something it have the memory it can work with the sync with the clock right then you have defined a red c in and then you have defined a red sum all are correct no issue then you have defined here where of c out that is also perfect no issue then you are instantiating a full adder fa0 now do we have the definition of full adder whenever we are instantiating any module we don't need the definition we need the declaration so yes we have a declaration here right so your full adder will have a output of sum of four bit then a output of scene then input input and input it's a full adder actually just now you have designed one right so it's such kind of full adder module only but it's a four bit full adder not one bit the issue is here is that see just concentrate here this green marker this is your sum you are connecting you have instantiated a full adder now you need to connect the port so you are connecting this sum which is defined here right which is defined here and let me draw it to make it more visible you have some here this is your full adder four bit full adder you have your carry out and you have three input now in your top module what you are doing this is your top module in your top module what you are doing you have defined a sum inside a top module and you are just connecting your sum 
to that variable which you have defined here but the issue is that anytime any output you are connecting it should be of a net type not a register type and here your sum is a register type now the question is that what's the logic behind it is it randomly we are saying that it need to be net, net somebody have defined no we have some logic i'll explain so what's the logic actually we have a very nice logic in in the very log how you can define which thing will connect to net and which thing will connect to a register type so in Verilog you have so in Verilog you have your module right and any module have two part actually one is inside that module so for example this is your output node this is your input node and we have another type of node or port which is called in out we still haven't seen them so now if this is the input type then the left hand side this is your left hand side could be a register could be a net or could be of any type but inside part should be a net type and the opposite is true for a output type of port so here outside should be net and inside could be reg or any type of data type and for both input and output both side need to be a net now what's the logic behind for example for take the sum so for some outside world is also connected to a reg then what will happen see your module your module will keep on work keep on working and sometime maybe it produce a result a output result that need to be connected to the output outside world but if outside in the outside world that output port is connected to a reg then probably that reg is not ready to accept that output what does it mean by not ready because your register can save have a memory component and it can only be enabled through some control signal like a clock like a reset reset or some other asynchronous control signal so inside the module you got the output but at the same time outside world is not ready yet so that time you may lose on those output result so that's why it it's the rule of Verilog that whenever anytime you are connecting a output port to the outside world the outside world variable outside means for this example the top module right and in top module see your sum was a register type so that need to be a so we need to correct this with a net or you just need to yeah net means OR of 4 bit and then sum if you do that then you are complying with this issue like uh, these rules and likewise you can explain on some uh, in the net input side also because from outside you can give any input anytime any input but if inside your module is not ready like if it is connected to register type and it is not ready then you might lose the input which is coming from the outside world so that's why this is the rule you need to remember it and input output you can explain yourself right if uh, because both side it can go in, in that side also and it can come inside the module also so both the time we need to be ready anytime anything is coming it need to be ready and which data type for sure will be always ready it is the net type so that's the problem we are having here you need to explain it in your comment section today also you can write in in your own sentence how you will explain this thing to your interviewer it will really a great exercise and for today we we don't have any question this is the question actually we have you need to think of it and write down in the comment section your in your own word what's the answer i'll see you tomorrow until then tata bye bye